Okay, so it's time to test the brand new uh, G7400, which I got from uh, China. It's uh, a retail one, but with uh, AVX512. So uh, based on my findings with the G7400, you can't predict how well the CPU can do on LN2 based on uh, just VID and water cooling result. The target is pretty high, like 6.4 plus to 6.5. So we will be trying, let's say like Y-Cruncher, R15, R20, Geekbench free, etc. So let's get let so let's get this going. I just got a brand new Z690 Dark Kim pin. So this is a fresh one and not the one that was uh, faulty to some degree. Galaxy 710 Fishbone graphics card, two sticks of G Skill Triton Z5, 6400 CAS32, and I'm actually using the Thermal Grizzly uh, contact frame on the CPU. I will make a separate video about that one. Later, I have two contact frames to compare, the Thermal Grizzly one and the one from Kata from Australia and Superflower 2000 watt 8 pack Leadex power supply. So let's get this going. Let's hope it will do well. It will be pretty interesting if you ask me. So I'll just get straight to uh, around full watt temperatures and let's see what happens. I have the uh, Inferno backplate, of course, mounted on the second power supply, but yeah. on the record. Yeah, that's the uh, rank one score in Geekbench 3 in dual core category. So uh, 22,317 previous top score by safe disk at 22265. Uh, so I think the uh, maximum effective clock was somewhere around 6.3 to 6.4. So only like 50, 52 point gain. Pretty awesome. This was extremely hard. And the, uh, this time I was using the uh, G-Skill Trident Z5, which seemed to be able to post and boot much higher speeds or frequencies with common rate 1, etc. But yeah, let's hope for the best. Okay, that's the Y Cruncher 1 billion record score in dual core category at uh, 6027 effective clock, 62 uh, by ZPUZ, 58943, previous top score by Safe Disk from South Korea at 58956. So I've improved my uh, previous score, which was a rank 2 score by 2 seconds. I think it's pretty enormous, and considering that this CPU was in a failed state, during my last attempt on LN2, that's pretty wicked. So I'm extremely happy once again. So it's very awesome to be at the top. So uh, let's hope for the best. You interrupt me and I interrupt you. A shame. When did we start losing and stop giving? I remember I gave it time, 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 all of my time, time, time. My mind, mind's mind, lost in its thoughts I want you, you, you want only you, you, you But my heart's all tied up in knots Wanna release it 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 
Okay, so that's yet another improvement on the bike runcher 1 billion 58.5, 6070 max effective clock, 6242-ish CPU-Z, and uh, memory at, uh, is that like 6750-ish, 27, 37, 37, 26 command rate 1, and I'm actually using my very original uh, Corsair Vengeance engineering sample sticks that I got back in like December or so. So very awesome result. All already like 0 .0, 0 0.4 seconds faster than safe disk. So yeah, pretty awesome. We might still able to, we might be able to try to improve even more, but it's very, uh, it's very unlikely. So uh, we could try to set maybe cash up by one notch and then a tiny bump on the uh, BCLK 20. Oh, and that's it. Okay, that's a uh, new top score in R15, previous, previous one was mine at 937, uh, this is 949, 12 point increase, max effective clock well above 6.4 this time, so pretty good. So almost two and a half second improvement. So 6.454 Hitting the limit at the moment Sadly Oh yes, this new uh, New bars Works very well with so yeah, so it seems that the, uh, uh, for maximum multi-core you need the latest BIOS with mode 3. So FLL override seems to work somewhat okay or better on uh, uh, the newer BIOS. But the uh, thing that needs to be fixed on this newer BIOS is common rate 1. So currently, for some reason, common rate 1 doesn't want to work properly on uh, this BIOS. It just fails at 3A debug code. Yeah, pretty awesome. After this, R20. So five points away from Clemens. 2549 versus 2554. At uh, 6415, but I'm not sure if this is like completely correct. It's kind of question mark where the uh, real effective clock stands, but it gives like a good baseline hint where it's running uh, based on this number over here. So Geekvents 4. Score out of fun, almost 24,000 multi core, etc. At uh, yeah, should be close to 6.4 .4 effective and, and uh, 5.8 on the cache. Okay, so I've been testing the G7400 for many days now, or pretty much like a week, with this recent amount of LN2 that I've had. I had both very good runs and also very bad runs with the G7400. First of all, the contact frame, well, mainly the one from Thermal Grizzly. It's very difficult to use. It's very easy to make the whole thing fail. So uh, uh, if the mount is not like 100% perfect, it's very possible that the CPU itself and the socket starts to tilt once you go very cold in temperatures on LN2. So you start to lose, let's say like memory. When I tried it for the first time, I actually lost memory already at minus 80. So only 54 debug codes and I had to stop everything warm back up and remount everything. It's very hard to use the contact frame on air and water cooling. It works absolutely well, but it's very hard to get like the very best mount on LN2. The uh, mount itself mat matters a lot more compared to thermal paste. So for example, Kimping Cooling KPX and the pink thermal paste from Thermal Grizzly, they will achieve pretty much the same end result. So no difference at all in the actual clock speeds the overall mount will matter a lot more. But yeah, after trying the CPU for a few days, I actually managed to do some very strong results in the end and that made my whole session pretty happy because at the very start, I thought I wouldn't get anything during this session. But I managed to do a new rank one score in Geekbench 3, for example, in dual core category on hardwarebot.org, so 22,000. 317 points, which is roughly, I think, like 52 points uh, increase 
over the previous rank one score by safe disc from South Korea. That one was extremely difficult because that's so limited on the memory and many of these G7400 CPUs they have very bad IMC. For example this CPU can only do up to like 7000 on the memory and it doesn't go up at all that much even with command rate 2 nor by using LN2 on the memory and I actually even tried to cool the memory with LN2 but that didn't really yield anything so I just uh, Stick to uh, like um, 27, 37, 37, common rate one timings for the whole uh, session with the CPU. And usually the memory frequency was between uh, 6500 and 7000 plus. I managed to post and boot very high BCLK with strong memory, like 7000 plus, and that, that allowed me to reach the new rank one score in Geekbench 3. And it's already posted at hardwarebot.org. Then uh, very strong new rank 1 score in Cinebench R15, also R11.5. Y Cruncher was extremely difficult, I tried that one a lot. It has a lot of like software tweaks and that's the only test that utilizes AVX512 instruction sets fully and that's one of the most important tests with the G7400 because G7400 is pretty much the sub 100 euro CPU superstar with AVX512. Of course, it's unofficially supported, as I already uh, covered this, but it's very funny if you manage to find a G7400 with AVX512, because AVX512 is mainly meant for the very high-end enthusiast platform so, uh, CPUs and the Xeon server CPUs. So it's pretty much like a 1000 euro class CPU feature on a 70 euro CPU. Pretty fun, right? But yeah, so White runs are 1 billion. The first New top, one, top score was like 58.9 seconds. Then I tried to push it even further and I managed to do a 58.5 second run. So pretty strong results overall. The uh, Geekbench 4 I also did at, I think it was 23,947 points. Huge margin over previous rank one score by safe disk, I believe. And TPU Pi 1 billion, I managed to do Yet another rank one score at 4 minutes and 17 point something seconds at around like 6.5 gigahertz. I think the effective clock may have been somewhere around 6.45. It's usually at least 50 megahertz lower at those very high frequencies like 176, 177 and 178 BCLK. The highest BCLK I did during this whole session was 177.5. So that's that, that is extremely high. Uh, CDBench R20 was uh, extremely hard as well as X2654K. I managed to do uh, one evening successfully in CDBench R20. The highest score I managed to achieve was 2549 points. It's a shared rank 2 score with some German guy, I think. And the rank 1 score is held by Sens or Clemens from our team EVGA. So. Uh, the very same motherboard, so Z690 Dark Kimpin, still holds the particular test anyways. The only non-K Alder Lake uh, overclocking top score, which this motherboard model still doesn't hold, is the X2654K in dual-core category. That one was very, that, that one was extremely hard because I had a lot of like CPU socket issues at the very end and that's why that's the reason why i'm stopping this video right now or this whole session with the uh, z690 platform so uh, at at earlier part of the session i managed to do a pretty okay run at uh, like 174 bclk without overkill it was uh, 8.2 fps so pretty okay result and the rank one score is at 8.315 so uh, if i could run the test again, even with like overkill, I would have taken the rank one score. I just needed a, lot, a bit more time, but at the very end, I had a lot of CPU socket issues. I started losing like PCI Express uh, lanes. So the card, for example, on the second slot suddenly went from X8 to X2 and so on. So there's definitely something wrong with the socket at very cold temperatures, but for air and water, the motherboard obviously works just fine. So that's the only thing that I didn't get. And it's quite sad, but you can't always win everything. But I would like to get that one anyways, because apart from that, the Z690 Dark Kimpin pretty much holds all of the non-K important Ola Lake overclocking records. So I already 
posted the 12300 Geekbench free uh, record score which I got yesterday but I will make a separate video about that score so uh, it's pretty good milestone for Dark Kimpin so holding all of the non-K overclocking top scores of course we haven't tested any of the 6 core non-K CPUs as those top scores or overclocking scores are held by the 12600K and KF but could be interesting to try a non-K 6 core anyways at some point but yeah that's pretty much it so uh, very hard to control the temperatures and uh, you need to go very cold between the turning process and when the system is about to boot. So if you can cold boot at minus 152, you need to cool down to minus 175 to minus 180 just before it starts to load the operating system. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching these overclocking scores. You can find them at hardwarebot.org. Like my video, subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching and I will see you on the next one.